Restaurants are starting to issue puke penalties during brunch. A box of giraffe poop was seized at the border from a woman who wanted to make jewelry out of it. And a man is charged with shooting all of the hawks to protect all of the squirrels. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast in the universe. Restaurants are instituting a penalty fee for vomiting. There's a reason that we love brunch, guys, right? We look forward to unpacking the work week with some friends over $30 egg dishes. Expensive syrup-laden pancakes and bottomless mimosas, right? Do you guys enjoy mimosas? I'm not a mimosa guy. I'm a Bloody Mary guy. If you're offering me unlimited drinks between these two, it's an easy choice. You go with the Bloody Marys. Who can drink all the sugar, man, with the orange juice? Too much sugar, man. And Bloody Marys are delicious, and sometimes they even come with bacon. All right, I've gone off the trail. Let's get back onto the trail. Where is my compass? Here we are. The article says we give ourselves permission to indulge in extra bacon during brunch and maybe even a second mimosa as we reconnect and we relax with our friends. What the article doesn't say is you're also nursing a hangover and what better way to nurse a hangover than uh, bottomless mimosas and bloodies. But nowhere in this happy place do you picture any sort of vomiting, it says. Yet dealing with patrons who puke is a reality for restaurants that offer the very popular perk of bottomless mimosas during brunch, particularly since the pandemic. They're finding that diners, often in their early to mid-20s, are drinking too much and vomiting in the bathrooms or even right on top of their tables at brunch. The burden on servers and staff to clean up after these public pukers is reaching a fever pitch, it says, making it necessary for some restaurants to take some precautions, and some are even implementing fees for puking. A puking fee? How about that? Never thought I'd see that. (laughs) Hey, hey, what what are you doing? What's this fee? Hey, man. I puked for free right here on this table last week. What are you charging me? I want to speak with a manager. About the puking fee, it kind of makes sense. Isn't there a throw-up fee in an Uber? I think it's like $150 if you puke in an Uber or a Lyft. So it kind of makes sense to have a puking fee. Now, if you're going to puke right on the table or on the floor of a restaurant, eh, I mean, maybe pay for that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's keep reading. I'll think about it and tell you how I really feel by the end of the story. We have here a restaurant in Oakland called... Kitchen Story. It's a cheery Asian-inspired place. It's known for its millionaire's bacon. Well, if you're going to pay a million dollars for bacon, you should be able to throw up anywhere you want in that place. The bathroom has a brand new sign that reads, Dear all mimosa lovers, please drink responsibly and know your limits. A $50 cleaning fee will automatically be included in your tap when you throw up in our public areas. Thank you so much for understanding. Well, it says $50. I was wondering what the fee would be, at least at this place. Eh, I guess that seems kind of reasonable. But, you know, this is a big contradiction when you're telling your patrons to drink responsibly and you're also offering unlimited mimosas. I mean, it's kind of like, what did you think was going to happen? You know? Uh, Restaurateur Stephen Choi had his staff post the warning in their bathrooms Nearly two years ago, after his general manager noticed a similar sign in some bars in the area and suggested that it might be a possible solution for all the puking going on during brunch. Funny, the solution should have first been maybe cut off your patrons. (laughs) Maybe not offer unlimited mimosa. You're kind of asking for trouble when you offer unlimited alcohol in any context, in my experience. Uh, It says some other tactics that have been attempted are how the bottomless mimosas are served at restaurants and for how long. Most brunch eateries enforce time seatings in order to discourage overindulgence and to move the tables. At this restaurant kitchen story, you can enjoy your bottomless mimosas for 60 minutes. Servers bring small carafes of grapefruit or peach-laced bubbly to the tables for customers to drain before another is dropped off. 
I'm not sure this is the best idea either because when you put a timer on it, it just encourages these young 20-somethings to just pound all the booze they can in that 60 minutes, which is not what you want. I mean, but the other caveat to not putting a time limit on the table is you're going to get people sitting there all day just drinking and drinking because it's completely unlimited. It's a nightmare situation. I say just be classy. Don't throw up in the restaurant. Do it on the sidewalk, out front, or in the parking lot. Come on, man. Giraffe feces was seized at the border. That's right. A box of giraffe poop was confiscated and later destroyed by U.S. Customs after a woman brought it back from her trip to Kenya. You're wondering, why would you bring back a box of giraffe poop? Is it worth a lot of money? What is giraffe poop used for? Perhaps medicinal properties? Or maybe used in the casting of some voodoo spell of some sort? No, no. She was using the giraffe feces, according to her, to make necklaces. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, have you guys seen my jewelry box? I got giraffe poop earrings, giraffe poop bracelets. Yeah, I even got an armadillo poop uh, earrings as well. I mean... Using the excrement of animals in my jewelry is something I've been doing forever. Uh, This woman obviously has some clients that use these as well. (laughs) Giraffe poop necklaces. Come on, man. I don't know if I believe her. Let's keep reading. The woman obtained the fecal matter. Oh, let's learn about how she obtained the fecal matter. Was she just... uh... Was she on a trip in in a safari? She was on safari and she told the... the tour guide to pull the Jeep over. Pull over! Ma'am, you can't get near the giraffe. Yes, I can. What are you doing with that basket? I'm getting the fecal matter. Don't worry. I'm an artiste. I'm very into arts and craps. (laughs) She obtained the fecal matter when she was on a trip to Kenya. She was returning back to the U.S. on September 29th when she was selected by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agricultural Specialists for Inspection at Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport in Minnesota. We have a quote from the Customs and Border Protection Agency. This passenger declared giraffe feces and stated she had obtained the droppings in Kenya and planned to make a necklace. The passenger also stated in the past she had used moose feces at her home in Iowa. (laughs) Yeah, at what point did you cut her off? from her history of using fecal matter to make jewelry. (laughs) It's funny when you declare giraffe feces. Do you have anything to declare? Plants? Animals? Yeah, I'd like to declare the giraffe shit. Yeah, I got a whole bag of giraffe shit right there. I'm declaring it. Uh, I'm using it to make jewelry. Yeah, that's not weird. What do you think that's weird? I use moose crap at my home in Iowa. I'm figuring I'm I'm gonna up my game and use some giraffe crap. Now, as you might imagine, agricultural specialists subsequently seized this box of giraffe droppings and destroyed it via steam sterilization per U.S. Department of Agricultural Destruction Protocol. In case you were wondering what the destruction protocol of animal fecal matter is, it's a steam sterilization. Yeah, I knew that. That's what I use to clean my butt when I've had a, you know, a rough night of drinking light beer. Here's a quote from La Fonda, who's the CBP director. She says, there is real danger with bringing fecal matter into the U.S. If this person had entered the U.S. and had not declared these items, these fecals, there's a high possibility a person could have contracted a disease from this jewelry and developed serious health issues from this crappy jewelry. Yeah, I mean, I guess disease is possible. I didn't think of that. The fear of disease is not at the top of my fear list when I'm walking around wearing a giraffe poop necklace. My first fear is uh, losing all of my friends. <laughs> That's my first fear. Because right, you can't go to a party wearing a giraffe crap necklace, I'd imagine. The article says, it is actually possible, in case you guys are wondering, to bring animal feces into the U.S. Uh, I know a lot of you are wondering, ah, I'd love to bring some animal feces. I go on safari sometimes. Uh, you can bring in some animal feces for certain species, provided the individual has obtained a permit. Get a a fecal entry permit is what you need. (laughs) Yeah, I know uh, whenever I'm entering a country, you go up to that that little kiosk that has all of the paperwork. You can fill out this forms for everything. There's a uh, 
a fecal import form that I've I've seen. I've never uh, filled it out because I've never brought in a fecal matter into the country. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've never seen a fecal import uh, form, but there must be one. Here's another quote from uh, the lady. All ruminant animal feces require a veterinary services permit for entry into the U.S. Kenya is affected with African swine fever, classical swine fever, Newcastle disease, foot and mouth disease, and swine vesicular disease. I mean, they're very concerned with you bringing the diseases in here. I'm, I, I would be more concerned, like I said, of uh, having all my friends and relatives uh, totally denounce me after showing up to Thanksgiving with a giraffe poop bracelet. The woman in this story will reportedly not face any charges whatsoever. Uh, they said, because the woman declared she was in possession of the box of droppings and readily abandoned it willingly, she won't face any sanctions. Had she tried to sneak it past the agents, she could have faced a penalty of 300 to $1,000. I mean, I, I still question her reason for bringing it in here. The, the reason she told customs. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just difficult to believe that it was going to be used in jewelry. I just can't really believe that. I think she's too embarrassed to tell them that she makes poop smoothies at home. <laughs> Giraffe poop smoothies, the best, the best. So much protein. Want to create a podcast? Spotify's platform lets you easily make, record, distribute a podcast everywhere. Even earn a little bit of money all in one place, too, for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. You record and edit on your phone or your computer. You send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts can be heard. They even have video podcasting options. Spotify for Podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions as well. Best of all, it's free. Try it. Download Spotify for Podcasters or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. A Rhode Island man is charged with shooting hawks in order to protect the squirrels. A Rhode Island man is charged with violating something called the Migratory Bird Act. This man allegedly shot and killed various red-tailed hawks and cooper hawks around his property. The reason was to protect the squirrels. I don't know what this guy's thinking, man. We need fewer squirrels. We need more hawks, sir. <laughs> Who tries to protect the squirrels, man? And they breed like crazy anyways. Officials alleged that 64-year-old Robert Ferreira, obviously a huge squirrel fan, he lives in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, he used a pellet gun to shoot the hawks in his backyard. They alleged that he shot an estimated 80 hawks total, which he believed were a threat to the damn squirrels. Who visited feeders on his property? Oh, just feeding the squirrels, doesn't like the hawks. I don't know why. I just can't imagine loving squirrels so much. What's wrong with this guy? Somebody needs a friend. The officials say that the neighbors of Robert Ferrara reported hearing popping sounds from his home. Subsequently, they found 10 to a dozen injured and dead hawks on or near the property. This guy didn't even clean up the hawks after he shot him. What did he think was going to happen? He's just blasting down hawks. He doesn't even go and get them after it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying like you should do this, but there's a way to do it if you're going to do it. You don't blast hawks out of the sky and then they land in your neighbor's pool and you go, yeah, I'm done for the day. <laughs> what an idiot, man. Uh, the article goes on to explain what the Migratory Bird Treaty Act is. It protects certain birds, including the red-tailed hawk and the cooper hawk and Obviously, it forbids hunting, capturing, or killing birds such as this, unless you happen to be authorized by a permit, which I assume this guy never filled out. And had he filled out the permit, I highly doubt they would have issued one for this particular reason. You say you want to kill all the hawks that go over your roof every day, and your reason is what? Oh, I like the squirrels, man. You know, I got my squirrels that come around and I feed them and stuff, you know. I built a little wooden bar behind my house for the squirrels and then I put little nuts on the bar and then I live stream it I live stream video of the squirrels coming in and they sit at the bar and they eat the nuts I get a lot of positive comments on my YouTube channel about that people just love my little wooden bar I built for the squirrels behind my house man oh yeah I call it the furry tail that's what I do yep yeah. anyways those hawks they 
they eat my squirrels. So, you know, I just want to shoot them all down. Is that cool? That's okay, right? I can just shoot them all down. I just got myself a pellet gun off Amazon. What do you think? What do you think? Now, uh, this maniac faces a misdemeanor charge. Hard to believe it's only a misdemeanor having killed so many of these endangered species. Punishable by, up, punishable by up to six months in prison, which doesn't sound like enough, and a fine of up to $15,000, which also doesn't sound like enough. But I'm glad they caught him in time for Halloween, because I'd imagine he would have shot some children walking up to his porch <laughs> to save his squirrels. Get away from my house! You trying to get my squirrels? This guy probably wears a squirrel suit when he uses his pellet gun, too. <laughs> I just picture him in a full head-to-toe squirrel shoot with his little pellet gun blasting the hawks and laughing like a maniac in his backyard. Oh, yeah, we got to call people like this. Yay! Everybody, 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 everybody. Oh, everybody. Listen to Weird AF News, everybody. Thank you, everybody. That listens to Weird AF News. I appreciate you spending a little time with my uh, little tiny podcast that I record inside a closet on a daily basis. I appreciate that. I want to give some thanks and praise. Uh, first off, to Carmelita, who bought me coffees off my website, weirdafnews.com. That was very generous of Carmelita to buy me coffees over the weekend. I appreciate that. And she wrote a little note. She wrote, I thought it funny, my first experience with Weird AF News was about a Hooters waitress in Florida inserting chicken, wing, chicken wings into her vagina. Yes, I remember that one. That was a good one, Carmelita. You guys remember that uh, Hooters waitress in Florida putting the chicken wings into her vajayjay? Carmelita writes, Then I heard the story of a woman celebrating her 100th birthday at the Hooters. My initial thought was, whoa, I hope it's not the same location, hey? Listen, just want to say, Jonesy, you're doing an excellent job keeping us entertained. Some days funnier than others. But I'm grateful you show up for us every day. Thank you, Jonesy, for always making me shake my head and ask WTF. Yeah, Carmelita. I'm, I'm glad that I can do that for you. And I want to thank you for buying me coffees off my website, weirdafnews.com. That was really sweet of you. Appreciate that. You guys can buy me coffees there. You can also join the Patreon uh, on at my official website as well, which is what someone named Mr. Sachi just did. Yes, we have a new patron, a new patron member. Mr. Sachi joined the Patreon, and I'm so grateful. So big shout out to Mr. Sachi for becoming a patron member, supporting the arts, if you want to call this arts. <laughs> I guess you'd have to put that in quotes. This is, this is quote, art. <laughs> Some comedian in a closet doing the news is art. Anyways, uh, this is a great show of support for Weird AF News when you join the Patreon. So it's like buying Jonesy a coffee every month. So big shout out to Mr. Sachi for doing that. I so appreciate that. And please enjoy the extra content that I put in the Patreon. I put something every day the past week in the Patreon, trying to keep my patrons entertained. So check that out. You guys can join the Patreon as well by going to weirdafnews.com or downloading the Patreon app on your phone and just doing a search for Weird AF News. It's very easy. Or there's a website, patreon.com slash weirdafnews. So you can do that as well. I want to thank everyone who reached out to me over the weekend. And I hope you enjoyed the Florida Friday stories. I hope you had a nice Sunday of football. I'm not even going to talk about my Patriots who are uh, at the bottom of the NFL. Horrible, horrible. I'm looking forward to NBA season. That's cool. And I'm also watching some Major League Baseball playoffs too, to, just to keep myself entertained. Uh, anyways, enough about what I like in the world. Uh, although I, do, you, I should say I like you. I like you very much, and that's why I show up every day for you. If uh, you love the podcast, please consider subscribing to the podcast. You can also give me five stars if you're listening on Spotify. I would so appreciate that. It only takes a second just to click the five star that is right below the title of the podcast, and please like it. And if you want to call the show, the number is 646-450-2012. You can send me articles to funnyjones at gmail.com as well if you come across anything weird. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you. And good luck with your life, man.